An arrow function is a shorter way to write a regular function. As you know, we write a regular function with the function keyword, followed by a name, a parameter list, and a code block that contains the function logic. In the logic, we can perform operations and return values with the return keyword. An arrow function doesn't use the function keyword and can't have a name. It's called an arrow function because it uses a fat arrow between the parameter list and the code block. If we want to invoke the arrow function and reuse it, we can assign it to a variable and use the variable name for the function call. Depending on the arrow function structure, we can write it in a shorter way. If we only have a single parameter, we can omit the parentheses of the parameter list. But, if we have more than one parameter, or none at all, we have to include the parentheses. If an arrow function only has a single statement, we can omit the code block's curly braces. And of course, we can write it on the same line. Arrow functions implicitly return, so if the function has only one statement, and that statement returns a value, we can omit the return keyword. Another implicit return shorthand is to wrap whatever we're returning in parentheses. This shorthand is typically only used when you have a single expression, but it's longer, so you might want to break it up over multiple lines. As an example, let's say we want to return an object. But JavaScript will think that we've created the function body and get confused. We can fix that by just wrapping the object in parentheses. It's common to see this shorthand in frameworks like React. We might have a component with a lot of props we can't spread, for whatever reason. It still counts as a single expression, it's just more readable over multiple lines. Unless we pass an argument in a function call, the default value of that parameter will be undefined. We can add our own default values to a parameter by assigning a value to it in the parameter list. Something to note though, is that when we add a default value to an arrow function with a single parameter, we have to use the parentheses. If we save the file and take a look at the console, the first function call without the argument will show the default value of Jane. Default parameters can also be used in regular and anonymous functions. An arrow function takes its this from the surrounding scope. In other words, from its parent scope. That's easy enough to understand until we try to define an arrow function inside an object. We expect that when we save the file, it will print the name to the console. Instead, we get an error. That's because an object literal, like we have here, doesn't create its own scope. The curly braces that surround the object doesn't define a block, it just defines a container. So the arrow function isn't inside the user object's scope. Instead, in this case, it's in the global window object scope, and first name isn't defined there. Arrow functions aren't suited as methods. Typically, we use arrow functions in situations where a regular function's parameter needs the result of another function, like set timeout. As an example, let's convert the arrow function to a regular function. A regular function, of course, defines its own scope. So, if we define an arrow function inside it, the arrow function will look for its this outside of the regular function scope, where first name is defined. But, if we shouldn't use arrow functions as methods, where should we use them? Well, as we mentioned, arrow functions are more suited to situations where a regular function's parameter needs the result of another function. As an example, we'll use set timeout and log the name to the console after two seconds. A good rule of thumb to remember is to use arrow functions as inner functions and regular functions as outer functions.
In the next video, we'll take a look at how to use the new export and import syntax with modules. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.